We move on now to the second sub-item under item 9, which is 9B, reports of state parties on the use of international assistance from the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund. As you can imagine, this is an important means to take stock of the implementation of the Convention on the Ground. Mr. Secretary, the floor is yours to present this item to us. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Ladies and gentlemen, you will recall that Article 24.3 of the Convention provides that the beneficiary state party shall submit to the Committee a report on the use made of the assistance provided for the safeguarding of the intangible cultural heritage. At this session, 17 of these reports are presented, which were submitted between the 1st of July 2018 and 30th of June 2019. Through the hyperlinks in the first table of the document, you will find reports that are available in the language in which they were submitted, either in English or French. They are final reports for those projects that have been completed, and progress reports for those still undergoing implementation. Summaries of these reports can also be found in the annex to this document. Actually, these reports represent only a portion of the ongoing projects. The second table in the document includes a list of all ongoing projects for the reporting period, which makes it a, a total of 36 projects in 30 state parties supported with international assistance for a total of 4.18 million United States dollars. Many efforts in the current biennium were devoted to intensifying the implementation of the international assistance, and this has resulted in a sharp increase of the expenditure rate, which had been systematically underutilized in the past, as was already discussed under item seven. Figure two outlines the increased number of requests examined by the Bureau and the, rising number of, and the rising amounts granted to international assistance projects since the establishment of the mechanism in 2008 and up to 30th of June 2019. With the intensified use of the mechanism, it can be concluded that the international assistance has become a significantly important source of resources for supporting safeguarding efforts by states' parties. Finally, I cannot help but stress the importance of monitoring. The sound monitoring of projects provides stakeholders of the convention with more learning opportunities on the operational aspects and experiences of implementing projects in different contexts. This is why the focus of the Secretariat will shift to systematic monitoring, lesson learning, and assessing the outcomes of funded projects, which actions will be supported by the newly established safeguarding implementation and monitoring team within the Secretariat. Madam Chairperson, with your permission, I would now like to ask my colleague, Do Yun Lee, to present us a more detailed overview on the status of the implementation of the International Assistance Mechanism. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Ms. Lee, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Tim. And uh, good morning, members of the committee. Uh, it is my pleasure to present uh, today to you some key findings and observations related to the uh, implementation of the international uh, assistance mechanism. Uh, to start with, uh, I will just share a few uh, maybe facts and figures. Uh, between the 1st of July uh, 2018 and 30th of June 2019, that is the uh, reporting period, 17 international assistance requests were submitted to the Bureau for its examination. 11 of those files were granted assistance, of course, by the Bureau, while the committee had uh, approved only one request for an amount greater than U.S. $100,000 at its 13th session. Accordingly, 92% of the approved projects were examined by the Bureau and not the committee. I think we need to show it. Yes. Now, as shown in the pie, on the pie chart on the screen, and in line with UNESCO's global priority for uh, Africa, 58% of the overall amount granted for international assistance went, went to states parties from Electoral Group 5A. During the reporting period, this rep represents a total amount of 2.2 million US dollars for 17 projects. As in the previous year, the current reporting period also saw a promising expansion 
in the geographical outreach of the mechanisms. Six states parties are benefiting from international assistance for the very first time. These six states are Djibouti, Eswatini, Lao People's Democratic Republic, Mozambique, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Ukraine. We may also observe that states parties are making good use of the technical assistance arranged by the Secretariat. Seven countries that are benefiting and benefited from assistance during this reporting period had received prior technical assistance through the provision of our experts to improve the quality of their uh, requests. Now, Madam Chair, if I could also just briefly share some interesting trends to the scope and modalities of the international assistance projects that are currently being implemented. The international assistance mechanism continues to showcase a broadened scope of projects. While inventoring continues to be an important thematic focus, taking up to 50% of the recently approved projects, the projects have become increasingly comprehensive. They cover a wide range of safeguarding actions, which include awareness raising, uh, transmission, capacity building, revitalization, etc. Capacity building also remains the most common focus of projects. While the inclusion of intangible cultural heritage in education, and I think we've already talked about this, has also become more prominent within the international assistance mechanism. Some projects approach education as a means through which transmission and safeguarding could be achieved, while others tend to focus on the training of uh, professionals through university networking or the integration of living heritage into university courses and degrees. And finally, Madam Chair, throughout this period, emergency assistance has also proven to be a very effective way for states parties to focus on safeguarding measures. These projects have especially been directed at the recovery and maintenance of peace in their territories. In this sense, we have witnessed that the three projects in Colombia, Niger, and Cote d'Ivoire are really contributing to ensuring the viability of living heritage of vulnerable populations in different contexts of emergency situations. Of course, this is just a very brief snapshot, Madam Chair, and with 36 ongoing and active projects during this reporting period, there is really so much to learn from the diversity of safeguarding actions of these projects. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Do Yun, for presenting these different issues related to the 2003 Convention's International Assistance Mechanism. I now open the floor. Does anybody wish to take it? Yes, Colombia, please. Muchas gracias por la palabra, señora presidenta. En primer lugar, queremos felicitar al órgano evaluador por la preparación de un informe que refleja asuntos de reflexión fundamental sobre el carácter de la Convención y sus objetivos. Llamamos la atención a la recomendación del órgano evaluador a tener en cuenta la salvaguardia de los aspectos culturales, sociales y simbólicos que derivan de las prácticas del patrimonio cultural inmaterial y de no reducirlos a productos o servicios de consumo. En este punto, es clave reflexionar sobre la naturaleza de las prácticas asociadas al PCI, puesto que en muchas ocasiones es común que el PCI esté asociado a procesos tradicionales y transmitidos de generación en generación, que han generado el sustento de familias de maestros y maestras practicantes de los oficios y saberes. En ese sentido, es clave reflexionar en los mecanismos del, del listado cómo facilitar la reflexión sobre el balance entre promoción de los aspectos simbólicos y culturales del PCI y la capacidad de los maestros de poder vivir de dichas prácticas como históricamente lo han hecho. Asimismo, es de particular importancia el llamado de atención del órgano evaluador con respecto al turismo como opción de salvaguardia. Sin embargo, se recomienda eh, tener una discusión pues que justamente en el espacio acá del 14COM tendremos sobre patrimonio inmaterial y turismo. 
Muchas gracias. Gracias, Colombia. El, the floor is for Philippines. Thank you, Madam Chair. The higher usage rate of the international assistance mechanism of the ICH Fund is one of the recent success stories of the Convention. Based on the results of the report, we are glad to see that it's in line with UNESCO's Global Priority Africa. Having said this, we also hope that the benefits of international assistance shall accrue as well to the other regions, as the needs there are likewise diverse and urgent. In this, in this spirit, we see merit eventually in the more targeted approach, with priorities being given to states' parties that do not have any or few elements inscribed, and those facing acute challenges such as the seeds and post-conflict or natural disaster situations. We also see a need to widen the information dissemination about technical assistance, especially through social media. We want to make an important point that while the ICH Fund has a devoted budget for international assistance, cooperation need not be limited to the avenues under the convention. There is so much potential for South-South cooperation and international dialogue <clears throat> and cooperation through multinational files that remain untapped. The framers of the convention and operational directives had this in mind. These initiatives need not be <clears throat> um, donor-driven, but designed and implemented by communities in the global south for communities of the developing world. <clears throat> so we would like to see the committee develop a more strategic approach to international assistance and cooperation, as this might help address the challenges we are increasingly facing. ICH should be a force born out of the creativity and passion of the human spirit for dialogue and mutual understanding. When communities share their practices and when other communities appreciate and see commonalities with those practices, then we achieve the lofty goal of the UNESCO Constitution, that is, to build the defenses of peace in the minds of women and men. It is not just a matter of using the appropriated budget or processing requests and reports. This is the heart of our ICH project, and it is our collective responsibility to make it work for those that need it most. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Philippines. Austria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Ms. Lee has just given us the facts and figures of the use of the international assistance uh, in the reporting period. And here we see that 11 newly granted projects for international assistance um, have been uh, um, provided. And they are a good indication of the success of the dedicated efforts by the Secretariat to enhance the international assistance mechanism. By providing technical advice and technical assistance, the quality of international assistance requests keeps, is kept high. Our delegation welcomes the provision of services beyond the international assistance mechanism, as well as increased efforts to ensure the monitoring and follow-up of the projects. The UNESCO field offices carry out some highly appreciated work here. Maybe this assistance could also be extended to Category 2 centers national commissions for UNESCO's or NGOs. We expect the continued intensified use of the support mechanism. With more and more projects, we will have the opportunity to identify recurrent challenges and benefit from the experience of successful projects. Thus, we welcome the focus on monitoring, on lesson learning, and assessing the outcomes of funded projects by the newly established safeguarding implementation and monitoring team of the Secretariat. Thank you. Thank you, Austria. Now the floor is for Senegal. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Je voudrais féliciter le Secretariat pour ce rapport. Et c'est avec plaisir également que je voudrais partager avec vous quelques éléments clés de cette expérience que le Sénégal a vécue pour avoir bénéficié euh, de cette assistance 
euh, international. Pour rappel, le Sénégal avait initié depuis 2016 un prêt inventaire du PCI afin d'évaluer le, le potentiel dans les terroirs intérieurs et mesurer des défis à la sauvegarde. Cette étape avait permis de préparer et de soumettre en 2017 une demande d'assistance internationale à l'UNESCO que le bureau a acceptée pour 99 000 dollars. Ce projet a été co-géré par le bureau hors siège de Dakar. C'est une expérience inédite. C'est la première fois qu'on le fait. Mais finalement, malgré toutes les craintes sur les éventuelles lourdeurs de procédure, c'était une grande réussite. Avec beaucoup d'intelligence, nous avons travaillé avec le bureau de Dakar. Le projet visait essentiellement un renforcement de capacité nationale en travail d'inventaire participatif avec les communautés. Et les résultats ont été satisfaisants et au-delà même de nos attentes. On a réussi à mettre en place une stratégie nationale d'inventaire. Elle a été élaborée et mise en place. On a formé des acteurs institutionnels, des représentants de communautés, des ONG, cinq ONG que nous ne connaissions pas et qui ont participé à ce travail et sur le travail d'inventaire participatif et sur les plans de sauvegarde. Une commission nationale même finalement a été mise en place pour la sauvegarde du PCI par décret présidentiel et cette commission comprend tous ces acteurs que je viens de citer. Enfin, il y a eu un inventaire pilote qui a permis même de retenir 59 éléments pour la première liste représentative nationale du Sénégal, ce qui nous permettra peut-être l'année prochaine de présenter déjà quelques éléments pour l'inscription sur, sur les différentes listes de, de cette convention. Enfin, des modèles pédagogiques ont été élaborés pour une phase expérimentale dans des écoles élémentaires en, avec, en collaboration avec le ministère de l'Éducation. Je voudrais pour finir réserver une mention spéciale aux communautés qui ont été au cœur de cette expérience. Avec ces communautés, on a beaucoup appris. Finalement, l'expertise se trouve au niveau de ces communautés. C'est là où on retrouve beaucoup de choses qu'on ne savait pas et je voudrais les remercier même si elles ne sont pas là et cette, à la limite, cette, 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 cette prise de parole leur est destinée. Je voudrais remercier pour terminer effectivement le secrétaire de la Convention pour le suivi et les conseils utiles. Et tout à l'heure, peut-être une petite vidéo vous permettra d'apprécier ce que nous aurons fait sur le terrain. Je vous remercie, Madame la Présidente. Merci Sénégal. Avant de continuer avec les pays, je vais donner la parole à M. Curtis. Non, uh, juste pour dire que, en fait, nous avons reçu la vidéo du Sénégal. And we propose to show it now and then continue the debate. We will show the video now.
finalement, il a enlevé la partie caméra. Ouais, ouais. Merci euh, au Sénégal pour partager avec nous le vidéo. Maintenant, on va continuer. C'est le tour d'Azerbaïdjan. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my delegation thanks the Secretariat for the document presenting the status of the implementation of the projects and activities uh, under the international assistance mechanism. We note with appreciation the fact that as a global trend, the international assistance mechanism is experiencing a broadened scope of actions through projects financed by the ICH Fund, which focus not only inventoring and safeguarding projects and preparatory assistance, but also start to look in the inclusion of ICH in education. This is something was also mentioned uh, by the Secretary of the Convention in the previous items. So, as well as using the emergency assistance modality to use the power of ICH to contribute to consolidation of peace and lasting stability. Um, Azerbaijan welcomes the efforts of Colombia and Niger within the framework of their emergency assistance projects particularly. We believe the committee should welcome the efforts of these states, which provide innovative community-based approaches to coexistence and reconciliation, as well as aim to achieve increased resilience and dialogue between displaced populations and local communities in different contexts. Thank you. Thank you, Nazarbayan. Por favor, Cuba tiene la palabra. Gracias, señora presidenta. La, de, la delegación de Cuba desea subrayar la medular importancia de la existencia y plena funcionabilidad del Fondo para el Patrimonio Cultural Inmaterial, en particular para los países menos adelantados, los estados africanos y los pequeños estados insulares en desarrollo. En lo referente al proyecto de identificación, definición del inventario del patrimonio cultural inmaterial que implementa el Consejo Nacional de Patrimonio Cultural de la República de Cuba, sepa que este proyecto es de interés prioritario para el Ministerio de Cultura, que nuestro compromiso es alto. No obstante, diversas realidades han provocado un retraso en la ejecución de las actividades previstas, principalmente el, retor el retardo en la obtención de los recursos a propósito del recrudecimiento del, bloque del bloqueo que ejercen los Estados Unidos de América sobre nuestro país. Ya en proceso de implementación se han realizado dos talleres de sensibilización sobre la Convención del 2003 y los objetivos del proyecto. A partir de contar con el Centro de Categoría D2 de Protección al Patrimonio Cultural Inmaterial Crespial, para garantizar el, el experto en el área que junto a los especialistas del Consejo Nacional de Patrimonio Cultural trabajarán con las comunidades para garantizar la calidad del trabajo y cumplir en el tiempo previsto. Agradecemos a la UNESCO la oportunidad del trabajo en este importante proyecto en una de las zonas más apartadas de nuestro país. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, Cuba. Now the floor is for Zambia. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Zambia would like to join um, all the previous speakers that have uh, uh, congratulated or thanked UNESCO for the provision of the uh, international assistance for intangible cultural heritage as of guarding. We are a beneficiary, and uh, we just wanted to briefly share our experience on, uh, on, on, on our ongoing project. We have a project uh, entitled Strengthen the Capacity of Safeguarding and Management of Intangible Cultural Heritage in Zambia. Uh, this project is intending to develop a, a Bachelor of Arts degree in the Intangible Cultural Heritage uh, Safeguarding. Oh, sure, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think uh, our experience is that the timing uh, in implementing such projects is very, very crucial because this is a three years project. And uh, as you know, um, uh, projects f are funded under the international assistance only have a duration of three years. So within that three years, we had to develop the materials and implement the program. 
in Kalamu we can run for three years. So which was quite tricky. So the beginning was quite uh, uh, tricky and we involved a, in, a, in a crash program. So um, our first workshop unfortunately attracted a lot of, uh, attracted a lot of uh, uh, negative publicity. As you can see from the report, I do not want to delve into that. Uh, I think it was misrepresented by a number of uh, uh, news media and uh, media houses, and uh, it had a backlash. Fortunately, we had the support of the, of the University of Zambia management. Uh, our minister also supported us, and she was even forced to make a ministerial statement in parliament to, um, um, to, to allay the fears people had that we're introducing a degree in witchcraft. And uh, I'm sure some of you must have seen it uh, on the website. Uh, I, might, I must also mention that UNESCO headquarters, together with our permanent delegation in Paris, also helped to uh, allay those fears that people had at the beginning. Fortunately, the storm was, uh, was, 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 uh, came to an end, and the program is now running. We now have 16 students that are enrolled for this program, and we have developed a, a, a 18 courses, which will be done in a four-year degree program from first year up the fourth year. So um, the last part of this project is to produce and publish a, a, what we call a program manual that will be able to guide those that are going to implement this course and probably to also assist other countries that might want to do a similar course uh, to ours to be able to, uh, to copy, to learn something from there. So right now, this manual is with the publishers. We don't know how long they're going to take to, to finally publish the document. Thank you very much, Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Sambia, for your intervention. Now, uh, l'Armenie, la parole est à vous. Oui, je vous remercie, Madame la, la Présidente. La délégation de l'Arménie remercie le secrétariat pour la présentation de ses rapports liés à la mise en œuvre des projets d'assistance internationale durant cette période et l'appui, euh, la priorité donnée aux projets d'assistance sur le renforcement des capacités et le patrimoine culturel immatériel dans l'éducation. Elle doit féliciter les États et pays qui sont qui déploie justement des efforts en vue d'assurer la cohésion entre les communautés et tout cela dans un esprit de, de paix et de solidarité. Euh, pour conclure, donc, cette délégation est particulièrement attachée à ce que les principaux bénéficiaires de cette assistance continuent à être le pays, les pays du groupe électoral 5, conformément à la priorité globale Afrique. Merci. Merci, l'Arménie. Any other intervention? So I'll give the floor to Mr. Curtis now. Oh, Djibouti. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Je voudrais saisir cette occasion pour remercier les membres du bureau ainsi que le secrétaire de la Convention de nous avoir accordé un projet de renforcement, un programme de renforcement de capacité de 82 000 dollars qui s'inscrit dans la formation, le, le, formation de, de la société civile, de communautés ainsi que des acteurs nationaux. Mais comprend également un plan de sauvegarde, la mise en place, l'élaboration d'un plan de sauvegarde quant aux éléments du patrimoine culturel et matériel égyptien ainsi que des formations dans l'élaboration du dossier sur la liste, pour la liste représentative du département culturel immatériel. J'ai saisi cette occasion pour dire que ce, ce, ce projet qui devait normalement, qui s'étale jusqu'au mois de juin 2020, et le premier atelier dont nous, nous avons commencé, nous devons commencer très prochainement la, la sa réalisation, a été un peu retardé pour des problèmes un peu techniques et de disponibilité du, du facilitateur. Et nous pensons le démarrer le plus tôt possible. C'est pour dire que Djibouti est engagé dans cette voie de renforcement des capacités et de réalisation du programme qui, a, qui lui a été octroyé. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup Djibouti. Maintenant, la parole est à vous, Monsieur Cortez. 
Thank you, Madam Chairperson. And uh, I would like to first of all start by thanking again all of those uh, states who have benefited for their thanking. And indeed, uh, I think we've had a number uh, of states uh, intervene uh, who are benefiting. And it is uh, indeed um, very encouraging and I, I, I feel very important that this mechanism of the convention become more and more operational. And before addressing some specific questions, I'd also like to mention, uh, and I think it will address that indeed with the new team, uh, so some of those, there's, uh, there is, uh, some of these issues will be, uh, will be addressed and I believe we'll be able to improve and expand significantly, not necessarily only on the numbers, but also on the kind of way we are dealing with international assistance. And I'll come to that uh, very quickly. Uh, I took uh, note of some of the comments from Colombia, but some of them concerned also, I believe, uh, the work of the evaluation body. Uh, the Philippines uh, made comments uh, on how to, uh, uh, how to look at uh, using the fund as a South South cooperation mechanism to broaden its, its, um, uh, its, its scope through better information, including social media. Again, I think these are the kinds of things uh, the new team shall be able to work on and will be able to concentrate on. And I do also took note of the idea of potentially also thematic areas of intervention. At the moment, the big challenge has been operationally in this fund. And indeed, I think over the years now with this dedicated team and with through the discussions, fine tuning its focus and, and learning from it should be an important uh, aspect. I also took note of Austria again. Uh, to look at and welcome and thank you for the remarks and I think they follow a little bit in line with some of the comments from Philippines. What are the lessons we learn? How can this fund become a meaningful operational mechanism of the convention and uh, beyond just a granting mechanism if, if, we, if we could say. Um, uh, and then how can we learn on recurrent challenges? On that respect I think there can be lessons learned on safeguarding practices. The fund should be able to also improve our understanding of our safeguarding through a series of concrete uh, uh, activities. Uh, I thank Senegal, Cuba, Zambia, Djibouti uh, for their thanks as they are all implementing. I think Senegal raised the issue of working with the uh, field office and the good experience. Indeed, uh, a couple of years ago, we, we started on the service modality uh, with two experiences in Senegal and then with the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And this has been so far a successful modality. And in some cases where those states wish, it helps alleviate some of the burdens related to administration and so on. So uh, it is very pleasing to hear that that is working. And we hope maybe that can be uh, a modality for other states. Um, I also took note of Azerbaijan's reference to uh, the two projects focused on emergencies, which were particularly uh, important. And that can go forward. Uh, also, we've been working with Cuba, and we do we are aware of larger contexts which may uh, affect a project implementation, and we try to work uh, so that accommodate as much as we can uh, for those uh, contexts. Um, Zambia, thank you. Armenia, yes, we continue to work on Group Five, but we of course don't uh, limit to Group Five B. So uh, I think the numbers are there, and it goes along. Uh, Djibouti as well, we thank, and uh, we understand that. Sometimes uh, in the beginning of projects there are delays, so we hope to try to catch up, uh, but we, I'm sure that this will go ahead well. Uh, I see Colombia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Por favor, Colombia. Gracias, Presidenta. Uh, para Colombia resulta absolutamente clave eh, el apoyo del fondo y sobre todo el apoyo también de la, de la Secretaría en el desarrollo de, de los dos proyectos que hoy ejecuta. Uno, como bien lo conocen, se titula Patrimonio Cultural Inmaterial como base para la resiliencia, la reconciliación y la construcción de entornos de paz en los posacuerdos de Colombia. Y el otro, eh, Mi Patrimonio, Mi Región, Estrategia para el Desarrollo de Capacidades en Gestión Social del Patrimonio Cultural Inmaterial en dos departamentos de la región colombiana del Orinoco. Agradecemos las eh, intervenciones previas que se han hecho sobre estos proyectos proyectos que se hacen en territorio, proyectos que además eh, eh, son de alguna manera eh, la plataforma para el desarrollo de una metodología, una metodología que una vez concluidos los proyectos vamos a compartir con los Estados miembros, porque finalmente 
el espíritu del fondo y de los proyectos que apoya el fondo es que ese saber hacer que produce el desarrollo de cada proyecto pueda ser compartible, pueda, pueda eh, servir a la cooperación. Así que eh, ambos proyectos están en curso, eh, Presidenta, y en, en los territorios, con el concurso total de las comunidades, con un diálogo permanente entre el, 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 el Estado colombiano y los actores de este proyecto y también con la Secretaría. Estos proyectos han supuesto también eh, ad, adaptaciones a los, pro, a los contextos que, que supone cada territorio y agradecemos también en ese sentido la flexibilidad que ha tenido la Secretaría para entender las circunstancias específicas que rodea cada proyecto. Muchas gracias, Presidenta. Muchas gracias, Colombia, por su intervención. Let us move now to the decision. Please refer to document LHE 1914-9B Rev. It is on screen already. Let us then proceed paragraph by paragraph. Number one has to do with the document that we have examined. Adopted. Paragraph two, recalling Article 24.3 of the Convention. Adopted. Paragraph three, Three, welcoming the dynamism of African countries with regard to the international assistance mechanism and congratulating states that have been granted assistance for the first time. Adopted. Paragraph four. May I consider that no one will object to thank the countries that have submitted their reports in a timely manner. Timely manner. Adopted. Paragraph five. Shall we appreciate the new trends and emerging themes among projects as a positive impact of international assistance? No objections adopted. Paragraph six. May I also consider that the committee has no objection to encouraging states parties to continue to take advantage of the technical assistance, which is aimed in, at improving the quality of international assistance requests. Adopted. Paragraph seven, referring to ongoing support for emergency assistance. I see no objection. Adopted. Paragraph eight, does the committee wish to express its support for the alternative modality of the provision of services? I see no objections, adopted. Paragraph nine, referring to the multiple submissions of international assistance requests by a single state. Adopted. We have now adopted each of the paragraphs. We need then to proceed to adopt the decision as a whole. Seeing no objections, I therefore declare decision 14.9b Adopted. Before moving to the next item, I know that among the countries who have benefited from international assistance and completed their projects, some wish to share with us their experience. May I therefore give the floor first to Albania. Gracias, señora presidenta, por darme la palabra. Dado que esta es la primera vez que hago uso de la palabra, me gustaría expresar nuestro agradecimiento a usted, al gobierno y al pueblo de Colombia por la cálida bienvenida y la hospitalidad. 
Madam Chairperson, I'm very pleased to say a few words on the implementation of the international assistance provided to the ODIA Academy, a very active um, social society organization in Albania in the field of culture to help prepare a nomination file that we hope will be presented to this committee for action at its next meeting. In, conform in conformity with the rules and procedures, the implementation process was subject to decision-making, monitoring, and review by a steering committee composed of five members uh, from the Ministry of Culture, the Institute of Culture, Anthropology, and, Art and Arts Study, the National Center for Traditional Activities, local authorities, and the Academy itself. In this way, all stakeholders were fully involved in every step of the whole uh, process. Experts that were contracted to help prepare the nomination file are amongst the most well-known with ample experience in, in IC research, public relations, and folk festival organization. Actually, the assistance allowed um, to hire such expertise. The responsibilities and time frames were clearly established in order to guarantee a smooth and successful uh, process. Reporting to the steering committee was ensured all the way. Special attention was given to the broad involvement of the communities, groups, and individuals, uh, especially the youth. They have been, indeed, at the core of the preparation process and have been crucial in providing valuable information in various aspects of research, education, tourism, and media. In this respect, 9,000 signatures were gathered throughout the country in support of the nomination. Serious work, a reasonable time frame, and rigorous monitoring and follow-up led to the preparation of the nomination file in time. I wish to thank the committee for the assistance provided. Indeed, as highlighted by several mem uh, committee members, international assistance represents an important tool for the implementation of the convention. I'm therefore pleased to report that the assistance has been properly used and its implementation has, in our conviction and satisfaction, yielded the desired results. And I thank you. Thank you very much, Albania. At this committee session, unfortunately, there is no representative from the Democratic People's Republic of Korea present. However, the state has sent a video on the implementation of the completed project, which we will be showing now. I would like to thank you all for keenly sharing your experiences with us. Dear members of the committee, we have now completed the examination of item 9B.
Sorry, Kenya wasn't here earlier and is asking for the floor. Please, the floor is yours, Kenya. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kenya was actually here, but I think our flag was not being seen. It was raised. Kenya appreciates the report from the Secretariat, and it would be remiss of us not to mention that Kenya has benefited severally from the international assistance and graciously received funding support from the ICH fund amounting to 144,430 US dollars. This amount was used to safeguard the Enkipata, Yunoto, and Olingesher, which are three mill rights of passage of the Maasai community. As a state party, we are grateful that the funds have gone a long way in enhancing the safeguarding measures currently in place. The following activities have been undertaken. Several meetings with the representatives of the Maasai community, including elders, men, of course, and women, youth, and persons with disabilities, to induct them on the convention. These meetings incorporated stakeholders, including members from the National Museums of Kenya, the Kenya National Commission for UNESCO, and non-governmental organizations working in the culture sector. Capacity building workshops with elders, men, women, youth, and persons with living with disabilities on community-based inventorying, identification, mapping, and protection of the cultural spaces associated with the element, research, documentation, and inventorying of the element, and educating and mentoring of the youth and children on the significance of the element. The State Party through the Department of Culture is cur currently working with the community elders and youth to establish a website that will have information on the three male rites of passage and associated practices. Lastly, we are also undertaking an evaluation of the safeguarding measures and have embarked on working on the final reports with a view of submitting by March 2020. I thank you. Thank you, Kenya. Before we go through item 10, I would like to make an invitation. Colombia has prepared some events here in Corferias, around here, and there's a cultural exhibitions on uh, on some of our elements that are inscribed in the nationals list as well as in the UNESCO list. That is Silletera tradition in Santa Elena that has to do with the flowers from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. It will be in Plaza de Banderas, just nearby. We also have a piece of Festival of San Francisco de Asís, that is on the UNESCO list, in the UNESCO list. Rio Sucio Carnival, Blacks and Whites Carnival, and Holy Week processions in Popayan. All that will happen at noon, 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. And in the afternoon, we'll have an exhibition of live paintings of galeras, gualis, alabaos, and raising the altars, mortuary rites in the Aro communities of the Middle San Juan in the Pacific region, cultural space of Palenque de San Basilio, that is on UNESCO's list, llano works, songs, marimba music, traditional chants, and dances from the Colombia South Pacific region, and traditional vallenato music of the Great Magdalena region. That will happen from 5.45 to 8 p.m., also in Plaza de Banderas. You can meet the bearers of the elements in, the, in that place. At 7 p.m., we'll have in another venue, like 15 minutes away from here, the premiere of one film about the wildlife in Bogota and its surrounding. It's in Spanish, so for those of you who speak Spanish, you're invited to that premiere. We have also 
live workshops with the bearers of the elements at 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. Crafts of Nariño and from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. San Martin Horse Cuadrillas. That will happen at Pabellón 3N Stand Escuelas Taller and the Crafts of Nariño at Pabellón 1A in Corferias. Thank you so much.